All right, we're leaving Mount Surprise, leaving the snake infested grounds of Mount Surprise. Uh, we're headed to a little country town called Normanton. It's probably just gonna be a quick little overnight stop. We've spoken to a few guys um, who are local in the area. And they reckon there's a fantastic free camp just past the river in Normanton there. So we're possibly gonna be staying there and they reckon they've never seen so many salties just lining the banks, eh? full of crocs and full of barra as well. So we might try and get there and see if I can throw a line in and catch myself din some dinner and not become dinner for something else, right? We'll talk more about what we're doing for the rest of this episode once we're on the road. You ready? Happy to be leaving the snake infested grounds of Bedrock Village. To go to the crocodile infested waters. <laughs> of Normanton. Yeah. yeah. Are we going to do that? That free camp? Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to see if we can find it. Mm. Just just past the town, I think you said. I know, but that's the one that they're talking about is the one you need the permit for. Yeah. So I don't know how that works. We'll have to see. Tell you in a bit. Let's go. Well, we've just pulled into Normington and we've had a little bit of change of plans. We're going to push on through to Corumba. It's another 50 or 60 k's. It's right on the coast. Apparently, it's a cool little uh, uh, beachside town. Main industry is fishing, I like prawns and crabs and, and that sort of stuff. Uh, and it's also a bit of a, uh, a tourist fishing mecca because I'm pretty sure Barramundi is on the menu. Anyway, in Normington. Like I said, pushing on to Crumba, but we just thought we'd stop and have a look at this guy, right? That's meant to be life size. So that, like that's hard to believe, right? Yeah, I don't think it. Is there a plaque that talks about this? Because a, a guy at the caravan park yesterday says, when you pass through Normanton, here. there's a crocodile and it's actual life size. That This guy has yeah. been recreated on the measurements of one that was caught back in the 1920s have a look chris the savannah king is an accurate artist's impression of the largest recorded saltwater croc captured in the world oh lordy weighed over two tons this replica was built to the dimensions listed in the guinness book of records wow there you go couldn't see steve Irwin jumping on the back of that thing <laughs> That's what you call a man eater, hey? My lord. Just pulled into Corumba. Got no idea where we're staying yet. We've actually just pulled up to the Barramundi Discovery Centre. They call it the Barra Centre. It's also the information centre for the local area. There's three caravan parks to choose from so we can either stay in town i think or you can stay right out at Corumba point it's four k's out of the main town center and you're right there at the point right on the north pacific ocean i think cameron just told me it was so i don't know what ocean there is here mate because we're right on the coast which is we've been inland ever since we left home like last five weeks this is the closest we've been to the coast in fact we're on the coast now and growing up in perth you're right on the coast, right? So I haven't been inland for that long. So it's going to be pretty cool to get, you know, back out into the coast and see the ocean and the waves and all that. But anyway, that's enough of me gas bag and here we go. Just in the information centre at the moment. Yeah. And I thought, Cam, come here, it's a good teachable moment, mate. I thought he might be a little bit off the mark. I don't know my geography very well. It's not the North Pacific, because the North Pacific is above Papua New Guinea. Oh. We are backing onto the Arafura Sea. Because we're right there, Camo. You see that, mate? Yeah. What ocean are we in then? We're not in an ocean, mate. We're oh. in a sea. Because you've got the landmass of the Australian continent, and then directly north is the Papua New Guinea. Okay. And then above that is the uh, um, North Pacific Ocean. So, yeah, yeah we're, we're in a sea at the moment. The Afura Sea. Just in case anyone else was interested in Oh, 
There's a barramundi there for your camo. So we drove past a couple of caravan parks and we're at the um, Karumba Point Sunset Caravan Park and man it is busy eh? <laughs> it's dead peg to dead peg. Um, not really got much choice right but there's a Sunset Tavern I think it's called and it's right on the ocean or the sea um, so we're going to go there later on for a, a cheeky little beer and maybe even a spotted dinner. I'm not entirely sure what we're going to be doing here for the next couple of nights. There's fishing charters and all that sort of stuff. So I really want to throw a line in. Obviously, I want to see a crocodile. I'd love to catch a, uh, a barramundi um, or anything really. But they do uh, crab and barra tours. So me and Cam might uh, shoot off and do one of those. Um, yeah, so Marana's in, chicken in at the moment. See if we can get a spot. It looks really, like I said, super busy. So we might not even get a spot, right? Anyway. Uh, it's all part of the fun games when you don't have a plan you just got to sort of find your way as you get there that's the thing we don't we don't really research or plan ahead exactly where we're going to go we just sort of discover the places as we come across them right so someone told us about Karumba uh, a couple of nights ago and Miranda got on the internet and said oh that looks like a pretty cool place so that's where we are any hootie we'll check in once we're set up I guess all set up, me and Miranda are sitting down having a beer. The kids have already made friends with other kids and Camo just came running back to inform us that we haven't quite left the snake infested caravan park grounds. Tell us Cam. There's a black headed, black headed python at the toilet box in the bushes there. Black headed python been spotted in the toilet blocks. No, next to him. Thoughts? Pack up and leave now. <laughs> no way. Simple as that. So we're just looking at fishing tours, guys. Um, possibly going to go onto one of them. Yeah, and, guess what? And we are going to go to the pub for dinner tonight. Guess, guess what? Sunset Point Pub. Sun Burger no, or hot dog. We saw. We saw a man Sunset walking tavern, back with sorry. a barramundi about this big. No. <gasps> really? Yeah. yeah. they just. Did you ask him where he caught it? No. No. Wait, they're just scrapping it up by the toilets. Oh, they're cleaning it, are they? Yeah. yeah. Go ask him where he caught it, Cam. Alrighty, just making our way to the. Did we work out what the name was? just a sunset tavern sunset tavern it's just behind us we thought we'd come along the foreshore here so crabs prawns barra and check it out mangroves and crocs mm, everything yeah. and snakes and snakes yes and spiders and it's obviously low tide so that's how we're able to get to the uh the bar this way it looks pretty cool though, hey? Yeah. This reminds me of Broom. Yeah, it does. It's very got a real Broom feel about it, this place. Yeah, the old mangroves, eh? I wonder how many nasties are lurking out there. Oh, tell you one thing. If the food's rubbish, I don't think it'll matter. No, it's Because the sunset out there is going to be pretty cool. Yeah.
Good morning. Mm. So, <laughs> noisy bleeders on their scooters. Hey, there you goes my peaceful morning walk, right? Uh, so just behind the caravan park, or just in front of it, I should say, is the boat ramp. This is where everyone launches the boats because it's the, what did they say, the barrier center of Australia. Yeah. And this uh, Norman River flows into the sea there or into the Gulf. Uh, full of crocs, full of barra, full of salmon. Full of bull sharks. Full of sharks, full of all sorts of stuff. Not bull sharks. Um, yeah, so we, after our meal out last night, we walked down to this beach and there's people down here fishing. Heard heaps of splashing and stuff out there, but no one was catching anything. So just going for my morning stroll down here to see if anyone's wet the line and see how they're going. Yeah, so I'm going to come down here with the kids today and go fishing. We didn't get on that fishing charter. They were all fully booked. I left it way too late. Um, is what it is. So we'll try and catch something down here. So just got talking to those guys launching the boat. They're throwing out the cast net and catching their bait. Like some of the bait that they were catching, I'd be happy to catch it with a rod and rod and reel, right? Um, he'd sling out the net just in the middle, just off the shore, just whoosh, sling it out, and no word of a lie, he'd be pulling up 20 mullet, and that's their bait. And they actually gave us a couple. We got uh, three, and he pulled in one massive big one as well. Uh, yeah, so. <laughs> How's that? No need to go and buy frozen muleys or pilchards from the service station. You just sling a net out and catch your own bait. Yeah, yeah so they're going out, they're going after uh, salmon and barramundi and all that sort of stuff. But we got ourselves some nice fresh bait, so we're gonna go and have breakfast. We're gonna line up, we're gonna head out there and see what we can uh, not catch. Hopefully a barramundi. <laughs> Hopefully, probably not. They gotta be 58 centimeters, by the way. Yeah, it's a big old fish, isn't it? You ready, Jacqueline? Mm -hmm. You wanna go fishing? No. No. We're going to the midnight. Oh, you're going out with mummy, are you? Yeah. We're going for handcrafted soaps and stuff. You're going for handcrafted soaps? Yeah. I mean, Cam, we're gonna go fishing. Okay. And you can also make cupcakes. Make cupcakes, righty oh Well, boys' day, girls' day. Yeah. Yeah. Who's this? Minnie! You made yourself a friend? Who is it? Ew. Oh, Minnie. hey, Minnie. She just ate Hello. Jeez, I reckon you better not get too close to the water. You'd make a good meal for the crockies. <laughs> Minnie, hey, she is a Minnie. Huh. You've been Minnie. walking around the caravan park with yeah. her, have you? Hello. Kids manage to make friends so quick. <laughs> Even little dogs don't know don't know whose dog that is, but they're walking it around the park. <laughs> Whose dog is it? It's Kate and Harry. Kate and Harry, oh, okay. There you go. Alrighty, well, after two and a half hours, <laughs> we're finally back down here. Right, tide's coming up. There's a couple next to us. We've only been here two minutes and they've already caught two really good sized brim. Cam's on the lure. I've got the big boat rod. I haven't even baited that up yet. I'm going to uh, put a nice big pilchard or mullet or something on there sling it out and just leave it so time to wet the line centimeter no. brim that's no. a dinner fish right there I got one. I've got two. oh walk it back buddy <laughs> well done all right high five this <laughs> reminds me of brim it does oh you got one big one two big ones wow hold it up that, they're all fighting hard. hold the line yeah well, i'm not surprised you got two big brim mate 
far out. All right, well, he's definitely a good size. Wait, just measure him just to make sure, though. Yeah. All right, bring him over. Wow, was that like... exciting, mate? Yeah. Right get, get him away from my face, please. <laughs> Wait, I'm just tighter. Oh, I need a little bit more length in the rope, mate. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so he's like 32, so he's well good sized. That camo is a beautiful fish, mate. What do you think about that? I'm surprised I was able to pull him in. Well done. Jacqueline and I are having a little bit of girls day while the boys go fishing and Jacqueline spied a brochure for a place called the Midnight Emporium and we have just been in there for probably the last, I don't know, 40 minutes having a chat with the most lovely lady. She was just beautiful in there and all different soaps and different things that she makes and what did she give you Jacqueline? She gave you a little pelican for free to remind, remind you of all the pelicans around Corumbin. So definitely worth a stop in there um it, yeah lots of little trinkets to look at but the lady was just beautiful to have a chat with so we thoroughly enjoyed our visit good good pick Jacqueline and she's put us onto a hot tip of getting some nice fresh prawns for lunch so we're on the hunt now just in case the boys don't catch anything <laughs> you guys looking forward for fish for dinner yeah we've got fish do you want to have a look at the fish Jacqueline yeah we're in the bucket here So it always pays to double check, right? So first person I spoke to goes, oh, that's a brim of 28 centimeters. Popped it in the bucket. That was the first fish I caught. And then someone else was walking down the street. It was a local and I showed him what I got. And he goes, oh no, that's a, uh, it's a silver javelin. Uh, 30 centimeters they gotta be. So luckily that that first one, he was still breathing. He went back in, but we did get three keepers. And Camo's one, the biggest one, was like 33 centimeters. Have a go at that guy, would ya? Right, so I'm gonna fillet these and I'm gonna skin them, put them in an egg wash and then we're gonna have them um, like some of that panko breadcrumbs. Shallow fry them, that's dinner tonight. We're gonna have those sausages as well. Thank you. Surf and turf. All right, I'm gonna uh, fillet these and I'll get back to you when I'm done. Right, so I'm just onto the last one now. <clears throat> now you're probably wondering why I'm not showing you how to do it because I don't have any clue of how to do it. Right? I'm making an absolute mess of it and my filleting knife is blunt as hell. The reason I'm doing it at the campsite, they do have a really good um, fish cleaning station, but a fishing chart has just come in, so everyone's cleaning their catch there, and it's shockers. And man, there's some big fish over there. Not like my little tiny 30 centimeter ones, right? Anyway, finish this last one, and I'll check in later. Righto, well thankfully I didn't record it because it was an absolute disaster. Instead of six nice big fillets, I got bits and bobs. That's dinner. What I'll do, got it in the Ziploc bag, straight in the fridge. Later on, I'll crack an egg into that. That'll be the egg wash, panko, shallow fry. Mwah. You ready for that tonight, guys? Yeah. Guess what Hi, they're doing, Lord. right? I'm cutting fish. And these guys Eat are having prawns. prawns. Oh, thank you. Oh, are they locally caught? Oh man, they're delicious. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Jacqueline. Right, so. Egg wash. Apparently, this is a really good way of egg washing all your fish fillets. Crack an egg into your little Ziploc bag and moosh it all around. Pretty good idea, isn't it? Boy, there's a few bones in there. Careful, guys, when you eat this. Sorry. Panko breadcrumbs. Right, so by the way, this isn't a cooking uh, segment because We've got no idea what we're doing. We thought it might be interesting anyway. Yeah? Maybe. <laughs> Jacqueline, do you want yours crumbed? Okay. Miranda? Oh, yes, please. I think they're crazy not getting a crumb. This looks really good. Okay, that might leave the rest of it. Unpankoed for the kiddies. Right, camp kitchen, right next door to our setup. Nothing exciting happening here, just snaggers and uh, potatoes. How's that sunset? 
not a bad spot to turn sausages really is it just get this fish on Smells pretty good, eh, Camo? Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, it's gonna be hot. Well, you got I'm no nuggets. expert, but how's this for surfing too? <coughs> Looks good. Well, yeah. What? Weird surfing turf. <laughs> anyway, we'll leave tonight here. We'll get stuck into dinner. Tomorrow is actually Anzac Day, so we're going to get up super early, guys, and we're going to do the Anzac Day ceremony, service. Anzac Day service. Mm -hmm. So, mm, see you in the morning. See you in the morning. Well, very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome here this morning to the Corumba Cenotaph for today's, in this year's Anzac Day service, 108 years after Anzac Day. This section of the river in front of us was a vital RAAF operational base in the Second World War where the flying boats, flying boat aircraft landed and took off. <coughs> Hence the name of the area is Sunderland Park, named after the flying boats which took off and landed on this river along with the now famous Black Catalinas during World War II. Let every stay 